Hi, I'm the Rick and Rick Turns, and today's project is this little thing right here. This is a stop collar for a tool rest post. It's occasionally nice to be able to drop your tool rest back down into the banjo and always have it come to the same place you were before. And that's what the tool rest stop collar is. Put this into the tool rest, tighten down the tool, the banjo clamp, and then let the collar fall down to where it won't go any further. Tighten it up with a thumb screw just like that. And now you can take your tool rest in and out and in and out. It'll always be positioned to the exact same place. There's not a lot of occasions where that would be necessary, but occasionally, sometimes I have found it is kind of nice to be able to do that. And I'll show you that later on. Particular wood you use doesn't really matter. It needs to be something probably fairly dense, not, uh, not a real light hardwood or a real lightweight softwood because it has a threaded insert right here. This is a brass threaded insert. Gives it a lot more strength uh, and this is a steel thumb screw. Just goes right in there, tightens right down and it works very well. You may not really need something made out of wood and brass. Okay, uh, You can buy uh, little gizmos like this. I'll look it up and put a picture right here. Or what the heck, you could go and, and buy a, a hose clamp like you'd use on your car. Put it right around there, tighten it up with a screwdriver every time you wanted to use it. That'll do just as well. But it won't be nearly as classy. So let me show you how I make this. Well, there's not very much material that's needed for this small stop collar. First, you're going to need a piece of wood. I'd recommend starting with a one that's at least two inches on a side right here if you're using a, a one-inch tool post. Uh, there's a couple of hardware items you're going to need. And this is a brass threaded insert. It screws into a hole in a piece of wood. The interior threading on the insert is one quarter by 20. And the threading on the thumb screw here is one quarter by 20. So this screws nicely into this and this is what's going to be used to lock the stop collar in one place. Now I bought these as uh, packs of 10 for another project. So these are relatively inexpensive. I think this uh, both of these were about six dollars for each package. And of course what you're making this for is a tool post. In my case a one inch tool post we're talking about the diameter of the post that drops down into the banjo. But you need one of these, of course, loose, because you're going to use this to size the interior hole. When I drill a one inch hole through this chunk of wood, uh, it'll probably be a hair too small for this post to fit in easily. And we want the post to go in smoothly. We don't want to have to, to wrestle with the uh, stop collar when we're putting it on. Got three inches marked off on here. My initial cut on the lathe is going to be for two inches of this. Now that's not going to be the final height, but that's what I'll start with. So I'm going to cut off three inches. So here's my block. And I'm going to cut a mounting tenon on this end. First thing I'm going to do, just bring this down to round. Next thing I'm going to do, turn a tenon for mounting it on my chuck there. Okay, got my piece chucked up there. First thing I'm going to do is just even up this end. And while I'm here, that center point there is for 
the drill bit when I start to drill. I'm going to mark a few lines on here. First at one inch. And this will be where I drill the hole for the threaded insert. Now the height of the stop collar from here, in order to leave uh, enough wood around that threaded insert to make sure it's not going to split real easy, I'm going to leave a half inch on either side. And so I'm going to mark off one half inch on both sides of that. One half inch there and one half inch there. And I've got a half inch here, and I don't know, inch there or something like that. Um, I'm leaving it long and cutting it in the middle like this to give it more strength while I'm drilling the hole and especially while I'm driving in that little threaded insert. It can be hard to get in. I found on other pieces of wood it has a tendency to tear up the surface. So I want to leave a, a lot of wood here to give it a little more strength while I'm driving in that center. And then I'll come back and I'll cut it here and cut it here. So let me mark these all the way around. Not really necessary, I suppose, but... Alright, my line for drilling a hole for the threaded insert. And the total height of the stop collar is one inch. So the next thing I'm going to do is drill a one inch hole because I want to drill in two inches or at least beyond this point right here which is really an inch and a half using the scale and the tail stock there's an inch inch and a half about an inch and three quarters there and we got a one inch hole in there we got a one inch diameter rod here. Now they're not going to fit too well. It's kind of a, a really tight fit. Now under a lot of circumstances that's what you'd want, an exact fit. In this circumstance I don't. What I want is a little bit looser fit. So I want that rod, or I want the stop collar to slide up and down the tool post rod pretty easily. And what I'm going to do now is open up that hole ever so slightly with a carbide tip bit and I don't want to take off too much material that'll make it just fit way too loose And, as in a number of lathe operations, it's kind of uh, cut and fit. Alright, that's still a little tight down towards this end, so I need to open it up a little bit more. Let's try that out again. Alright, good. It's a slightly loose fit. That's exactly what I want to get. Next thing I'm going to do is to drill that hole in there. So I'm going to use, I'm going to lock the uh, piece in place here. And I want the drill bit to go in dead center. Now what I've got here is a 3 8 inch bit. And I'm going to start with this 3 8 inch Forstner bit. And then I'm going to open it up again uh, a little bit more with a regular twist drill. Alright, that, that looks pretty good. That's what I want. I want to go in right there. And just through one side. Don't have to do it on both sides. Not going to use the lathe, of course. I'm going to use a drill. So, here we go. Alright. So this is a drill bit that is 1 32nd over my 3 8 inch Forstner bit. And I just widen the hole up a little bit with it. Because I have had problems driving that threaded insert down into these things. 
you see I got my hole drilled now before I start driving that threaded insert in here uh, I'm going to try and strengthen the wood around the opening just a little bit and what I am trying to do there is prevent the wood from tearing up right up at the top and one more effort to prevent this wood from tearing out I'm just going to use a countersink on the top there just a little bit of a bevel that's right pretty well now let's take a look at the threaded insert here this is what's going to thread right down inside there now if you take a look at this threaded insert I hope it shows up it's actually got a couple of slots in there for a flathead screwdriver well those actually don't work all that well uh, I've got a fairly good size flathead screwdriver and it's not wide enough plus I have found on other threaded inserts that uh, if you have to put too much pressure on it it's just going to shred right up at the top and that's not something that you want either okay so I'm going to use my uh, professionally made uh, very expensive threaded insert inserter that's a TII just like this remember I said it was a standard one quarter inch bolt yep had it right in my scrap pile and as with any threading if I were threading a steel rod or anything else I want to get it started straight it is quite possible to get it started crooked and that just leaves you with a mess So I'm going to start screwing it in real slow. Now I'm going to keep pushing this in until I can just feel it approaching the interior of the hole down there. And you can see it's down below the surface there. It's protruding just a bit through there, so I'll trim that up. Perfect. Brass is a soft metal. You don't have to have a carbide tip tool to work it. Even though that's what I'm using. And now I'm going to take this diameter down a little bit more. Let's give it a real test. Drop that in, tighten it up nice and tight, and uh, yep, that's good. I couldn't pull it out. That's what I want. My lines are gone, so I'm going to draw my half inch lines on there again. So I need to waste away. This chunk of wood, cut it off here. Of course, before I cut it off here, I want to do my sanding and finishing on it. So I've got my tailstock cone center in position for stability. I'm going to make this cut right down there. I'll cut partially here and then I'll stop for sanding. And a little sanding on the inside too. Alright, I want to do one more thing. Started to sand it and remembered I was going to put a little bit of decoration in here. Maybe a little bead or something. Maybe a couple of little beads right on the edges there. I'm going to sand this piece now. I'll be back after that. Got my sanding done here. I'm going to put some friction polish on here now. Well, if you've seen my friction polish videos, what do you do first with friction polish? You shake it up. See how it's separated? Good. And the way I do it 
which is I rub it on while it's off. The first coat I always put on while it's off. And the reason is, you can see down in there, it's kind of hard to get the liquid down in there. And if it's hard enough, I will drip some in there and hope I can get it all the way around. But I don't want to put too much polish on. I don't want to spill the polish on the floor either. I've done that before. Put a little more polish on there. First I'm going to try and get right up in there. And now... Just a matter of putting some pressure on there until it gets hot. Until it gets shiny, I can feel it heating up quite a bit. All right, I like the finish. Now, last step, part it off. And there it can. So I'm here at the bed of my large lathe that actually has the one inch tool post here. This drops down in there just like that. That's right. What I want to use this for is to put this at a certain position that I can put back in there after I have to take it off and be at the very same place. That's what the stop collar is for. I just put it on there. Drop this back down in there. Now initially Let's say this is where I want this uh, working platform to be. And there's my stop collar. I'm just going to tighten that down. Quite tight. Okay. So I work, 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 work here. And for some reason I have to remove this. Take it off. I put it back on. Stop collar still in the exact same position. Just drop it in there. Tighten it up again. And my work platform is at exactly the same height as it was before. There's what it looks like when it's all done. Let's see if we can get a shot of the inside. You can see the uh, brass insert there. Screw this down. You can see it just poking out there. Yeah, I got about an eighth of an inch or so, and which is that's plenty. Uh, doesn't really need to be very long. As a matter of fact, uh, that's probably just about right for this length of thumb screw.